Hugo says, I love you guys and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Wow. That just made me feel really special. Yeah, wisdom. I like that word. Okay. I have a four month old golden doodle puppy. He's very attached to me at this point. I brought him an extra, I bought him an extra, extra large crate. He's not having it. Cries and barks very loud. I desperately need help. Okay. So one four month old golden doodle. I'm guessing he probably he weighs about 30, 35, 40 yeah. pounds max. A XXL crate is for, meant for like Great Danes. And the reason well, it for, depends. If it, we're going to assume that it's a wire crate, yes. is what we're going to assume. You. Yeah. That, that definitely plays a role. Yeah. Uh, the reason for that, the reason to say it's meant for a dog that size is because the dog that fits in it, they're not, they're not meant to pace back and forth. And yeah. If it is a wire crate and he's able to pace, it's a playpen. Yep. And it creates anxiety if that pacing kind of takes itself over. Yeah, I, I'm, we're not saying that he's going to be happy in a properly sized crate. Probably still bark for the Pro first couple weeks. Oh, yeah. But you still want to give the dog room, or you only want to give the dog room to turn around, stretch a little bit, stand up and not hit uh, the top of their back on, on the crate. And just that, that's, that's really it. And I know it stinks, but you're just going to have to toughen some of this out. Now, if the dog is trying to escape, you're going to have to be firmer, you know, with, with that. But here's the thing about anxiety, separation anxiety, isolation distress. 90% of it happens outside of crate. True. So how much um, soft attention are you giving the puppy? How much does your puppy look at you and just get excited all the time? So how much excitement are you sharing? How much affection, love, softness, good, you know, good, sweet dog? How much training are you doing? on leash, on leash, leadership, guidance, confident, because the more of the fun, emotional, softness, excitement, freedom you share with your puppy, why would they ever be able to be alone? Now there is a genetic factor too. I'm not saying that like you did this by being too soft. That's not what I'm saying. We come across tons of dogs that are genetically predisposed to having this type of anxiety when left alone. We just want to make sure you don't nurture that accidentally outside of crate. So I'm going to bring up my ratio. Oh, I'm your ratio. Do your ratio. I love my ratios. All right, guys. So his just numbers, the numbers guy. I like the numbers. Something about the numbers. Just it rings to certain people. Minute tends to ring to it really well because that's what our brain triggers to very quickly. So I'm going to give a ratio for you just because you're already getting a lot of anxiety in the crate and the climate that we're in. COVID means we're probably spending a lot of time with our dogs. I don't know if you're home for work. If you are, it means that your four to one ratio, four times train one times affection means that you are predominantly training or working with your puppy in some way. That doesn't mean leash come sit down say all the time. Even existence work is a form of training. Place cot, place bed, whatever Te you have. Tethered to the leash. Tethered to you on the leash. Hanging tethered out. To but, not, but not allowed to touch you. Yeah. Like if you can't do place yet with your puppy, you can do the existence work mm -hmm. he's talking about, but your puppy's not allowed to come into your space. I call it supervised separation. It basically yeah. means that you put him in an area some dogs don't do well in the playpen, they might just bark, 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 because there's this barrier that they can't get past that leads to barrier frustration. But you can even tie them to the leg of your desk and just kind of have that on the harness. I prefer not on a flat collar unless, especially if they're doing a lot of pulling and frustration, yeah. it can lead to more of that. But all that existence work and that training, that's what help your, helps your puppy default to that training mentality rather than this need for affection, always trying to be Touching, right next to yeah. you. Now you can't just do the back tie. Like there's there's about 20 things you need to be doing. I mean, the other, the other stuff is the training of course, but covering crate, white noise oh, machine, yeah. playing TV, dark room, get them on a schedule. I mean, I would I would do some some diving, Google diving of uh, separation anxiety because yep. there's there's a lot, unfortunately, that you need to do. We could easily do a couple of hours on that question right there. And I know a question you're thinking about before we move on. One thing you're thinking about is do I have to take back this XXL crate that I could probably spend about 70, 80 bucks on? Not necessarily, but you can put a divider in it. Most of them come with the divider. You can also buy one on Amazon, whatever brand your crate is, type that in, click in divider. And then you wanna make that crate. So if your dog is this big and your crate is this, this, <laughs> this big you want it to be about this big so your dog's that big you want a circle into a down not pacing 
back right. and forth. But here's the kicker. Whenever you have that divider up, if your puppy can see through that divider, that still creates barrier frustration. That can happen with the playpen too. You need to put something behind it. I usually say a big piece of cardboard. If you have a TV or you go to like Best Buy and you go behind there, you'll usually have those TV boxes, really, really thick cardboard. Cut it down, put it behind that crate, or even put like a comforter or something. You, you just need something, no, the comforter he'll pull through. Yeah, you just true. need something to fill that space. Uh, that empty space when you use a divider. Did you know that that's like the only thing in the whole world that you taught me that I didn't already know? You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Imagine how much I've actually taught her. She just didn't realize. No, no, no. I, I, I know it all. That's the one thing. That is the one thing. Give me some hearts, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Keeg says, hello. Uh, it was, I was wondering. <laughs> that is an, it was wonderful. I was wondering if you could help me with some advice. On what breed of puppy to get? I like this question. Mm. Medium to large dog. Already have a cat that, that is dog savvy. Thank you for putting that. Um, we're very active, live near the beach, but we both work full time. There are occasional days where our dog might need to be alone for eight hours. I'm paraphrasing. Um, we want to put in the time and effort to training, uh, but we want something that's you know intelligent, placid. Uh, if such a breed exists, what would you suggest? Um, cat like King Charles. But that's not a medium. That's what I thought too. But that's not a medium to large breed. And that's I have a, a butt. I have a big butt though. I have a big. Well, I, I do have a big butt. But I also have a big butt. So. <laughs> Ricky laughs at that one. If I had said that, I would be like you're not in allowed. the office right you're, now. You're not allowed. Yeah, you're not allowed to say things like that. You just keep your mouth shut. Um, it's okay. Funny too. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing about a puppy. If you were to get a puppy. The first two years that, that you own that puppy and you're gone for eight hours a day, you will have to, I shouldn't say have to, that's unfair, but I personally think that you should get a dog walker or pet sitter to come to let the dog out at least for potties or your potty training is gonna take months. Now there are, there's, there's hundreds of years of dogs being alone, puppies being alone for eight hours, but that's different. They're usually outside in a pen. They go to this corner to potty and you clean it up when you get home and then the rest of the pen they naturally usually leave alone. It's a very different lifestyle. If you want this puppy in your house, then that eight hour stint is gonna be really hard the first um, year and a half to two years that they're alive. So I do want you to keep that in mind. But otherwise, there's no problems with training a dog to be alone eight hours, um, even in crate. Sometimes you might get a puppy that's not good at holding their potty and, and you'll just kind of have to see all, all dogs are different, but most of the dogs can by around that three, four year mark. They can get into a groove with that um, as long as you don't get you know a crazy breed. Do you have any other suggestions breed wise? I like that you mentioned, she kind of mentioned the old school mentality of if the dog's basically just in the backyard all the time, they pee in a corner, that you come home to clean yeah. it. That old school mentality, those dogs didn't live in the house even when the owners got home. So if or, you were, or very little. They, yes, they, actually, very they actually had a job and then they mm -hmm. came in at night. That's another difference too. So if you do want the dog to be an inside home dog, which is what home dog, yeah. house dog, like most of our most of the dogs that we have now, you do have to train them you with train, the crate. You have to train them, them how to be in the yeah. house. Yeah. They need rules, they need structure, yeah. they need boundaries. But yeah, I also agree with uh, getting someone to come in at the four hour mark. Yeah. And it might even take you a while to build up to that four hour mark. It takes our dogs in between three to four weeks of constant crate training every single day being with us before they actually learn how to hold it for four plus hours. We're not being very helpful though. What is a breed? Maybe a duck tolling I retriever? I said Kettler King Charles. That's super not what chill. they wanted. Duck tolling. Look up duck tolling retriever. Um, maybe, maybe a Springer Spaniel if you don't go to like a breeder that breeds them for hunting hardcore. Go to like a family a Springer Spaniel breeder. Cocker Spaniel. English Lab. Easiest one. Lab. Yeah. Are you don't crazy? Get, don't get American lab, get eight, English. Eight hours? At, are you nuts? Yeah. Labs are lazy. They save they all are, their energy for when you get home. Yeah, after two years of H-E double hockey sticks of nuttiness. I think labs are great. Yeah, but you train. Okay, we're not. Clearly, we have a difference of opinion. Family dog, you guys can get away with the lab. But yeah, they're gonna be a little bit crazier. I'm thinking of Molly right now. We got a dog named Molly who's literally been asleep on the cot for four hours. So. Yeah, and how many labs do you come across that's like that? She's a unicorn. She's a unicorn. <laughs> exactly. He admits it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna let me get through my other Can long I one. Can I tell you a comment from TikTok? Yeah, Please, comment from them. TikTok. They've already trained our three month old to walk on leash. Thanks so much for all the tips. Yay! You're I so welcome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Lisa. 
and being a good, consistent follower. Um, okay, Harley and Braxton, I've got a question for you. Um, my daughter, 11 week old puppy, comes to stay at my house. She always poops uh, in the crate with even less than 30 minutes. Never does it at her own house. Any advice? That was their old question. They have a follow up. Uh, oh, so we answered this one? Yeah, okay, cool. Let's go. All right, all right, new one. So my daughter has a hound mix now. Oh, okay, so now this 11 week old is six months old. They live in an apartment, uh, has a lot of dogs, lives with a dog, and visits me. Uh, she's great. He is great. However, when on walks, he sees another dog or occasionally even people. He barks and sounds mean. How do I stop this behavior? One, you want to get control of the head. Two, does he do it when he's with the other dog at home? Because if you have one dog, like as the trigger dog, he's just reacting to that trigger mm -hmm. dog and it builds a bad habit. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And uh, we've we've answered this question a lot on on previous episodes. So you could probably, and, and the, the actual questions, if you go to our IG, Instagram, TV icon, IG <laughs> TV. There, there's actually questions listed out. And, and I would honestly listen to all of them because there's gonna be nuggets from each one yep. uh, that you can pull from. My main thing is with a six month old dog, I wanna get rid of food to try to distract the dog. First, I want to get the dog to move with me. So I've got control of the head and we do let's go work, which is move when I move, stop when I stop. So I'm just doing turns, I'm doing 180s. And then if my dog goes that way, I go the opposite way. Even if I got to go in someone's driveway or, or something, uh, you want to go in the opposite way. Keep your distance from things, from other dogs for now, as much as you can. I know that's not always possible. And just get your dog moving with you because if you can't do it when they see a stray cat under a car or when someone gets in their car and drives away sniffing. If you can't do it at the lower level stuff, just turn and your dog turn with you. You're never going to be able to do it with, with the other dog stuff, with actually seeing a dog. When you find yourself in the situation where they do actually react, so the, the puppy, the six month oh, yeah. old puppy six does months. actually react, I like to take steps back because I want to create that connection with my pup. So let's go work in general is the step back, you get focused and you turn. Eventually you kind of find a rhythm where you don't have to step back. You can just turn and they naturally follow you. They yeah. follow your body language. Yeah. But you're going to stages. You're doing this in the easy stage until you can just do a normal turn. Yeah. When you introduce the challenging stage with the barking, Basically, you got to go back to the step back. Yes. Assertively, yeah. But you got to take that step back again. Though. Step back you're... and move. Back and move. Get out of there. Don't let your puppy bark at something else and see that something else walk away. It's like you rock back, get your puppy engaged with you, and get out of there. Wait for eye contact, say good, turn, walk away. Mm -hmm. okay. What if they don't get eye contact? The dog's you're probably, just you're probably not gonna get it, but you're gonna you get a work point to where the dog stops barking and maybe looks one split second in your direction. Mm -hmm. Like, what the heck yep. is this opposing force? And what does it want from me? And then you can I add food. Focus. Once, once that's better, then you can add food if you want. Uh, some dogs do better with it, some dogs don't. It depends. If you're leaning over, compromising too much body language wise, oh, come on, please take the treat, then it's not gonna work. But sometimes if your timing is good, maybe go take some classes on reward timing and energy, not yay, good boy, but like good reward. Good what's the, reward. What's the percentage you think that would take food in a situation like that? And how well, long it, do you think it takes them to do it? Ooh, well, I don't know. I don't know the person, I don't know the dog, and I'm not the percentage. handler. No, average, no, average dog no. You work with. Everybody is individual in their natural handling skills, in their relationship with their dog, and the dog is genetics. It's all too different to tell. But I will 50%. say this. I will say this. So work really hard on this for a couple of weeks and then do the turn and food when it's easy, like in the house, in the backyard, you know, in the apartment building, stuff like that, to kind of condition the movement with a reward. Then I can worry about it on the actual walk for at least a month, at cool. least a month. So, all right, uh, you go. I'm going short questions. Okay. All right, kinky curls. My dog is just so, <laughs> stop, stop it, stop it. <laughs> All right, my dog is silver. My dog is just over a year old and has recently started chewing things again. I think he's past the teenage phase, though. Frustrating. Um, I don't think he's. I think he's past the teenage. I don't think you're getting stages of adolescence, which Pushy. is like that. Yeah, that pushiness. Basically, him challenging the rules of authority you've made, the structure and the boundaries you've set. Now he's kind of like trying to leap over those walls. So it means you got to make them a little bit taller. Go back to your not no, not necessarily basics because basics is like woo sit yeah, but go back to more of the like come sit good less of the 
Harley, come, good job, sit. Burn it up a little bit. Get more focus, use your leash, maybe have them drag around the leash a couple weeks in the house. That's, that's, what, I was, that that's what I was waiting for him to say because a lot, not all of it, but a lot of this type of behavior is actually frustration. Your puppy, uh, your adolescent puppy needs more guidance. So it all boils down to more leash work, more guidance, less yelling, less going and getting the dog, less luring desperately the dog mm -hmm. with food, more of Demanding. calm leadership, pick up leash, this is what you do. I like to say demanding, but she would probably say, was it purposeful? What, in uh, regards to what? Everything, when you're controlling the leash, usually the best thing is more about walking with purpose, so not oh, like yeah. trying to run yeah. past a distraction or like running away from something big, yeah. but like just have purpose, pick up the leash, hey, let's go, don't worry about it, come on. Dogs need that, people need that, kids need that. And, and almost everybody weans off of all of that too soon with their dogs and so they get a lot of frustration and so they're trying to control the environment with the best way they know how, which is with their mouth, you know? And I'm gonna say this as well because it kind of feeds in the next question. One of your stages of adolescence, one of your biggest and last ones, well, probably not last one, but one of your bigger ones is 12 months to 18 months. You're gonna have a really, really big stage. They're an adult dog, which means that they've been doing what they should be doing probably for a while if you've got training at an early age. But now they're gonna take that one to two weeks where they're like, hey, remember all that all that hard work you did? What hard work? I don't remember any of that. You gotta work them through yeah. it. I know that was in Bethany. 16 year old that knows everything mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But why do they not do any of it? Yeah, they don't do any of it. Because they choose not to. So how long is this teenage phase? I'm a first time dog owner. This is from Dre NTL. Uh, you have three of them. And I think Bethany's gonna disagree a little bit. She might even uh, throw in some uh, her own advice. Bethany and Romy never. Um, I'm going to let think... you go first though <laughs> so I can pick yours apart because that's the it. best I'm, way to I'm do ready it. For it. So I'm going to go in the direction of stages of adolescence because teenager phase, honestly, you could have it for six months at a time and just kind of work through it slowly. But I'm going to go over the stages of adolescence first. Usually four to six months is one of the first big ones you see, maybe even a little bit early, three months. Usually seven to eight months is where I see the next one. And then 12 months to 18 months is where I see the last big one. And in between there, all of those stages of adolescence, all the work that you put in, they're gonna pretend like they don't know what you're doing and they're gonna act like they've never worked on it before. Be persistent, use leash, keep your focus, get strong commands. For me, it's just be persistent, pick it apart. Uh, no, I don't disagree with you. The way you worded that was way better than I heard you word it earlier, which confused, My caffeine kicked in. confused me. Your caffeine kicked in. So, so basically, a lot of puppies are still cute, little, sweet, moldable puppies four to six months old. And then other puppies, <coughs> terriers, are horrible little 13 year olds at, like 13 year old boys at four months old. They're already showing aggression. They're already trying to kill things. They're already My trying to bark at things. My mom said I was a very loving 13 year old. Uh, what happened? <laughs> well, that's for, another, that's for another time, for another time. Um, and then uh, what he said is that sometimes you can see another uptick. It's honestly, it's, it's a lot of it's hormone based guys. Like they get regular doses of hormones, just like teenagers, just like kids do. Look at, Ooh, I, I know. Look at the first two years of a dog's life. It's not every seven years. Like they used to say no. that it is. It's not the first two years of a dog's life is like zero to 18 years. Old. Oh, I love it. I I'm zero, glad you said it. Yeah, zero to 18 years old mm -hmm. for a human is the first two years of a dog's life. So if you feel like you wake up one morning and it's a different dog in front of you, that's... Probably is. Yeah, and then Probably two is. months later, all of a sudden they're reactive in the house. Like it's a lot of breeds, especially protection breeds, are notorious for going through a very natural, aggressive stage around the 12, uh, 12 month you break to- break that down, aggressive stage, what do you uh, mean by that? But they're testing out being aggressive, mm -hmm. being very reactive, very barky, and then if you, and if, then if some stranger just ignores it and keeps coming, they might try to nip or worse. Nip and at the heels, my dad, yeah. my dog did that. Or, or, uh, or, or like I was thinking of a Roddy I recently worked with, was starting to nip arms, and it's a sweet Roddy, about 14 mm -hmm. months old. It's, it's a really natural stage, it depends on how you handle it. Like you need, you need, everybody needs more knowledge on how to go through these phases with these different dogs, breeds, and, and mindsets because they'll keep you on your toes the first two years that, that they're alive. Your sweet little puppy at five, six months old, your sweet little German Shepherd, and then at 14 months old, they just grabbed a hold of some guy's shirt on a walk and you're shocked. 
There are some natural phases that they go through, or herding dogs, like the ankle biting, terriers trying to kill things. I mean, there's, there's just, they're dogs. Rats, little things. Rats, little, little critters usually. Um, so I just want you guys to keep this in mind because it, it really just uh, keeps everybody feeling like they're, they're constantly making mistakes. And that's just because you just need a bit more knowledge on how to get in front of some of this stuff. It's not, it's not always easy, especially now that we live with our dogs in our home. But please just keep that in mind. Final dose of the final big dose of hormones is usually around the two to three year mark. And then that's when you start to see them kind of settle into who they are. So, all right, we got to move on. We talk about thing. that all day. Rapid fire. Rapid fire, time. rapid fire time. Know your breed. Know we've your been, know your we've breed. We've been working with dogs for hundreds and of know years. Know your breed mix. There's books on every breed known to mankind. Yeah. At yeah. least most of them. Oh, the the counter surf. Uh, Gina says, "How do you train your puppy not to counter surf if and, you're?" And also, there's a follow up from Naomi on Instagram. Any suggestions to avoid being a dog being curious about counter toss and putting their front paws up on there? Okay. Oh, I love it. It's the same person. Well, when it, no, it's a someone different. So um, on the how to train your puppy not to counter surf, I'm not trying to be Henri, but if your puppy is under a year old, they shouldn't have access to countertops. So you have to, especially under six months old, there should be enough structure in the home where that doesn't even become a mistake that happens. I know that's not always doable. I, I know that. But that that is, for anyone else watching, that is the mindset that you should have going in. Once a puppy actually gets access to countertops, I will be totally honest, in my experience, there is nothing but some sort of correction of some sort that will stop a dog from doing that. Usually, like I've heard trainers will pop a balloon in the other room when they watch their dog on the monitor, you know, go up and jump on the counter. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can hop on Google for that. Do you have anything to add to that? I like scat mats. Oh, it's scat one of the mats. easiest things. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And so uh, just a really loud, sharp noise. The old school one is. The new one actually, I think, does stimulation now too. Okay. Yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, also, pet corrector is a really good interrupter and then a redirector. I like doing body blocks, stepping in between, kind of using my hip to bump them off of it. But that, that trains them not to do it when you're in the room. Yes, correct. Right, is body That's language. addressing it with yourself. It's not gonna help when you're not in there. Right. That comes down to what Bethany said, which is they shouldn't have access to they it. They shouldn't have access to it. But if you're in the room, you need to create an invisible boundary with body language. They're never allowed in the kitchen. I'm moving on. Okay, from... Marl? Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. I would have butchered it. Uh, hi, I'm loving the schedule. Thank you. My question is for how long do I keep the schedule going before I know that my dog is trained? At some point, would like to have my dog sleep on her cushion and indicate when she needs to go. So, that's a Bethany, huge... go. Oh, <laughs> All right. Mine is going to be way more harsh. Your dog is never, do training never stops. Um, I just had a, a, I have a 10 year old dog right now that we had a thunderstorm the other night and he's been a mess the last few days and I've mm -hmm. had to, Go back to more structure and more crating and calm crate patterning and and no couch and no spoiling and oh it's pain. So training never stops. Um, just because you know. Eh. So you need some form of a schedule all the time. If you want to create res resiliency in your dog, you should mix up your schedule. My schedule is insane. So even if I'm home at the same time a few days in a row, my dogs never eat at the same time. It creates really a resiliency for adaptation to different changes throughout the day. Um, Mary, oh, I, I gotta throw her a little bone on this one. Wait, can I finish? You gave it to me. Can it's I nice. finish? It's great to be interrupted, okay. right? <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> when it comes to your dog being on the couch and letting you know when to go, that's completely different. Maybe uh, it depends on maturity. You could teach the bell thing at the door uh, as a transition if you want. Ignore him. We talked about the bell without him last week, so feel free to watch last week's. Um, but your dog being on the couch and letting you know when to go is something that just happens organically as they grow and mature. But but if they're letting you know they need to go, that means they're about to explode. So I, I always just keep my dogs on a rotation. I take them out every you know chance I get. If they if I'm home, it's every few hours. If I'm gone, they wait till I get home. So um, you could do the bell method, uh, but just remember that the dog's brain can't even really tell its body that it needs to potty till it's at least six months old where it actually has a warning time. So, all right, go ahead. What were you gonna say? What was your remember. nugget of beautiful wisdom? I don't remember. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Okay, uh, all right, here's my bell. If you wanna take him out of the crate one night and put him on his dog bed and just see if he stays there all night long. But if you have a dog roaming around all night long, there you go. Yeah, right. that's my nugget. Rapid that's, fire. That's the bone. 10 weeks old Bernadoodle. Oh, one of my favorite oodles. What are some fun training games to work on come and recall? Multiple Fetch. people. 
Oh, well, yeah, thatch. thatch. Um, mul one. Multiple people, and you just ping pong. Just recall different rooms, a closet, a bathroom. Uh, put them on, teach them place. So if one person can do it. You can put them on place, go into another room, pause for 10 seconds, pause for two minutes. Dog come, let them find you, food. You gotta have a system though. You can't have four people yelling dog's name and saying come. Oh, yeah. So it's gotta be like, all right, Stacy, Jared, Bally and oh, I don't know. And then rapid uh, fire. Gerard. That was rapid fire. That was horrible rapid fire. And then you basically everyone knows who's calling the dog first. You come, good I, I think treat, they get the, break they get the point. And release. They they get the point. I don't think they do I'm that. the real PBJ. Can you still do a down sit stay with a pup who just got fixed? Yes. Michelle, hi from Australia. How to stop our Spoodle pup barking when someone knocks on the front door? I don't know how old this puppy is. That's a Spoodle. I don't know how old this puppy is. If it's under six months old, you need to do place work, lots of food work, practice. Pet corrector if over six months old, but still place, you still have to teach them what you want them to do instead, which is place. Are you still thinking about Span Spoodle? Spaniel Poodle. Spoodle. You feel better? I did. All right. Uh, Nick Kelly says, best way to train a dog to run with you off of their leash. Service trainer. Oh, uh, you got to do existence work. You got to do a whole lot of let's go work on a long lead, on a short lead, short lead first, long lead next. And you basically just got to build up such a strong bond. Honestly, it takes a lot of food in the beginning with a young puppy. For an older dog, you also got to know what kind of dog you have. If you have a dog that has really high drive, a lot of prey drive, and a lot of and minimal impulse control, I hope it's not and a, a lot of drive. I hope it's not you, a husky. You may not get that for a while. It's going to take you a lot of work, a lot of turn, good treat, turn, good treat, jog, stop, training session, jog, turn, treat, turn, treat, and then eventually move away from that. But I don't do any of it off leash until I have 99.9% .9 consistency with my dog being next to me, even through distractions. Proofed through multiple distractions. Yes. Kids screaming, car being loud, loud engine, uh, uh, semi making the whooshy noise from the brakes, squirrel what? running away, you, you, dog barking, dog playing fetch. You have all of this checklist of stuff you have to walk on, work on. But at the end of the day, guys, dog training is this. You don't have to teach anything if you just teach move when I move, stop when I stop, and stay away from me when I want you to stay away from me. Those are the roots of dog training. You get that, and then you build all your proofing of distractions on top of it. And all of you guys with really, really good dogs, don't get cocky and thinking walk down the street and think that your dog won't react to anything. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm just a little bit cocky. I had my dog when she was two, just a little bit. I, I had a two-year-old dog, still have her, she's nine now, and she's been a service animal, seizure alert and assist almost her entire life. I got cocky, I walked down the street, didn't even bring my leash, said, you know what, she's pretty darn good. I'm not worried. Motorcycle popped off, she almost bolted across the street, I actually had to tackle her to the ground to prevent that fear stage of the motorcycle, which she hadn't heard before. Don't get cocky. Yeah. Proof these environments. There's a list online that you could probably find if you really look it up on Google. Don't go down the rabbit hole, but look up proofing new environments. Yep. Kylie, that's a really good point, good story. I gotta Kylie, show my morality. <laughs> Every chance <laughs> I get to, I'm gonna bring that story up now like on a weekly basis. Kylie says, how to stop excitement barking when approached or passed by a person or dog on the walk. We talked about this earlier with the let's go work. Um, just we've to, talked about every video we've ever done. That's true, yeah. that's true. And then you've really got to get your dog to move with you before you can ask them to walk by a person. But stop trying to walk by things because to a dog it looks like it's coming at them. You need to bubble out and bubble around. But first you just need to get them to turn with you. And eventually put yourself in All between right. them. Okay. Even if you are going to circle around, put yourself, put yourself between. In the Middle, Distraction, yeah. dog, you. You want to do um, a question? Right, one last more. one from Alfie the Beast for training. Alfie the Beast. Am Alfie I training Alfie the Beast? Alfie the Beast has submitted questions before. Okay. This isn't our Alfie. Love your show, guys. My eight month old multi poodle has been cranky since nine weeks old and it's always quiet. But if I leave the house and leave him outside of the crate, he sometimes howls. What to do? Leave him in crate. Leave him in the crate. Yeah. And how does he know you're leaving the house? Drop that routine. He needs to be in a different room away from you guys, covered with noise machine on. And not see any of the triggers. Picking up mm -hmm. keys, shoes, he, the purse. Um. Or have the triggers, but work him through those triggers yeah. and don't actually leave the house. Can Put I answer the, one more? Yeah, yeah. What do you want? Do you want? Do you want? Okay, okay. Have a mini. Oh, no. Uh, 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 no, where did it go? Yeah, what was it? Is this it? Have a mini Bernadette. Oh, the jumping one. Yeah. 
Um, this, uh, Kaylee says their five month old jumps on everyone, everything. She's tried everything. Any suggestions? I'm not trying to be mean, Kaylee, but have you tried a good stern? No. <laughs> so you have She's to, like, yeah, every day. <laughs> you have to control the people and you have to control the dog. So the person, you have to ask them to be calm and stand up straight and not to acknowledge your dog. Get your dog um, with you. You can use food if you want, but then when you release your dog calmly, ask the person to be calm and give the person food so it gives the puppy a target. The moment they jump, use a leash tug and body blocking where like, if, um, if this is the person that the dog is jumping on and this is my leash and jumps up, hey, no, move into the dog, little leash pressure, settle down, do some let's go turns to calm the dog back down, then try again. You gotta repeat it until the dog is successful. So you really need to do this, I guess, with someone coming over and helping you at the house. Good luck, Kaylee. Thank you everybody, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time next Wednesday, next week. Bye. Bye.